Okay, to make some stannous chloride, we'll need a little dropper bottle. You can see here, a little dropper bottle. And you'll need some tin. So I had to go to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. I think I got this one at Lowe's. And basically, it doesn't say on the package that it is tin. It just says acid core solder general metal. So it's a solder. And um, but the cool thing about Lowe's and Home Depot is they're required to keep material safety data sheets or SDS sheets. And on the SDS sheet, you can ask to look up any other materials. And so you can see that the percentage of this is like 85% tin, which is plenty for this experiment. So anyway, I checked. It takes about 20 minutes to get that information. And so we just put some tin in this dropper bottle and then we're going to pour some hydrochloric acid in there. And honestly, I think I need to pull this closer to the edge. Or else we're going to have trouble. All right. Spilling a little bit. All right, got enough in there. Now we're gonna put that cap on. And put the lid on. All right, well, the smell's getting too strong, so I'm gonna have to cut the video for now. Come back in a minute. Okay, so here we are. Got these little pieces of tin and they're slowly digesting in the hydrochloric acid. It will take until about tomorrow sometime for the concentration to be high enough. It might be a little less time than that, but before when I've left it overnight, that's worked out okay to do the testing. So, to give you a little background, basically, Tin can go to tin plus one and tin plus two. What that means is tin can let go of one electron and go into solution, then it can let go of another electron and um, become a plus two state. And so how this works is if you've got a solution with, let's say a gold ion, and the gold needs to come out of solution, gold is noble enough it can take the extra electron from tin that's in solution. So you'll see a little bit of a precipitate of gold, but it's so tiny that all you see is like a darkening or something like that. And tin is noble enough that it won't precipitate out copper or things that are lower on the scale. So gold and silver and palladium and other things like that um, work out that they'll do a precipitate. The only problem with this test is that you need to have some uh, fresh stannous chloride. This is only good for about a month. Right now it's about June, I don't know, 25th today or 26th. And so in a couple, in basically in 30 days, I'll have to make more if I want to use it. And um, I'm planning to use it on a couple of solutions. One, uh, I've got some different waste solutions from gold refining, and I want to see what I have, if it's got anything interesting in it. So um, that's the simple version. Is basically we take some of that solution and pour a few drops of this solution onto it, and it'll give us a result. And that's what I intend to show in a day or two to see what we've got. Um, some people will do this and they will make calibra a calibrated solution of different dilution amounts. I think I'm going to do a separate video about dilutions in general and maybe I'll talk about uh, dilutions for stannous chloride, uh, how you would do it. Because I think that's, uh, you know, applied examples are a little bit better. So, well, when we get something, when, we, when this gets ready and I've got something to test, then we'll test it. Also, uh, one other thing, I'm just here in my little side shop. I've got 
a little bit of space here that I can work with. Sometimes I buy scrap gold here. This is right next to my house, and so if I need to meet with a client, I All just right, meet them here. So here we have the solution from the uh, bronze video, and we're going to pour some of this in here and test it with our new um, stannous chloride solution. You see it's totally dissolved, the wire that I put in there. A little side tip, if you get... Um, If you're looking to get some hydrochloric acid and you want to get some at Home Depot or Lowe's, you can find it under muriatic acid, which is basically, it's a bottle, it's labeled muriatic acid, but it is just really concentrated hydrochloric acid for, for stone working. So they use it to like clean off the stonework. Anyway, so we're going to drop a few drops of this on here and see what happens. Get my shadow out of the way. Ooh. Well, it looks like we've got a precipitate of some kind. It looks a little bit like, you know, silver chloride, because silver chloride is a white precipitate. And there's also some dark coloration, so I'm going to have to do possibly some further testing on this. There might be a little bit of palladium or something in here because it did give some dark coloration. Hmm. I don't know if it's a lot, but what I do know is that the coloration was interesting. So I put some more on there. A larger amount. you can see that something is precipitating. Vigorously. Well, and really you've got two colors here. You've got this dark color and then you've got this more yellow. I believe the more yellow is supposed to be gold, and the dark could either be a plat palladium or a platinum. I'm still pretty new at this test, and obviously I'm going to have to um, verify this some other way with some other chemistry work at some point. But I just thought this looked really cool and visually pleasing, so turn the camera back on after I was messing with it <laughs> just for you guys to see it so uh, you know if you like this video uh, please give it a like subscribe share it with your friends if you know your friends are into chemistry send one over to them too so yeah thanks bye So by adding these two together, now I have nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, and it's made in aqua regia. So the precipitate should dissolve in like a day or two. <laughs> That's so much fun. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. So it's like going back and forth 
between a metal and a salt. And so when it's a salt, it can be in solution, and when it's a metal, it has to be a powder. I'll probably have to, like, dilute this to get it to, um, stay a powder. <laughs> I have to have less acidity, because each time I put some of the stuff in there, it, like, dissolves it again. <laughs> Because the nitric and the hydrochloric acid. Oh, try to make a smiley face. It didn't work. We'll give it a second. Let's reset. Oh man. Let's see what happens. See how it like solved it? Like almost totally. Do it again. You're trying to make a smiley face. <laughs> there you go, guys. We got a smiley face. Whew. Hydrochloric acid is strong. Alright, well. Now I've got another solution I can test. Now i got to find another bottle to keep it in. <laughs> anyway. That's how chemistry goes. Every time you do a step, you make more solution and more mess. So have a plan with lots of bottles and containers. Label them what, what it is. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to try some other ways to precipitate out <laughs> what I think are press metal. I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong. But uh, it has a pretty strong indication, so... I like art and creative designs. This is pretty fun. I want to stop the video, but at the same time, it's just too entertaining to not sit here and do this. The video's been a little bit off center this whole time, but I need to get something to hold my camera better so I can see what I'm doing. That looks like palladium to me. It's dark. Palladium is usually pretty dark and doesn't, and it dissolves easier than platinum does. So, you know, if it were to be something, I think that's what it would be. But I could be wrong. We've also got kind of a yellow tint going on. Sometimes can be cold. So, well, I didn't think the nitric acid would dissolve any gold in that test. You know, maybe I was wrong. So now I've got more testing to do. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. Bye.